All right, uh, welcome to Temple of Pwn. Uh, there's no slides this week, so we're just going to hop straight into a binary, um, talk about race conditions this week. I created this binary just for this topic, so it's relatively unique, but I'm pr pretty sure I've seen challenges that are similar to it in an aspect of it's not going to be that kind of unknown or unfeasible for a challenge in the future or something. So looking at Ida, main it just looks like it sets up a socket. Uh, H times looks like one three three seven. Listen, accept. It looks like we then fork off or thread off in this case to the vuln application or vuln function. Um, within vuln we have print menu, read A to I. Looks like we have a switch case or something. So four three two and one. Uh, with delete, create, edit, and then looks like leave if there's a four, um, and probably an unknown or the default case, which we can look and see that the string's called unknown, and that it says unknown command, so it's a good, good guess for that. So looking into create, uh, looks like it loops through, checks to see if we have 15 of the notes, um, make sh looks like it looks for the first zero, and I'm kind of assuming this in most cases because I wrote the code and that's what it's doing. So it looks like it just finds the first out or first chunk in the notes array that's not zero and then we'll use that for our spot. Uh, compares to the counter to 15. If it is 15 it'll just leave. Next it'll write out the string probably asking that for the size. Uh, we'll malloc that size and then save it into the notes. Doesn't look like in this function there's any spot to write values in there to check it looks like it makes sure that your size is less than uh, 0 or 1024 or equal to I guess and then since it's below or equal it's gonna be unsigned so even if we put in a negative number it's not gonna work so we can't do an underflow attack or something uh, inside edit looks like we give it a number it checks that notes index to see if it's allocated or not which now looks like I just realized there's a bug right here too. I'll talk about that later if you guys remind me. Um, next we go into it just does the right. Looks like it checks a sizes array, which I might have missed in the create. Sizes, yep, it looks like it sets our choice, which was set from our size earlier. So it looks like sizes array holds the size for the given index. And it'll just read that amount. So there's no overflow, it doesn't look like. Delete, it looks like it checks our, theme, our uh, choice again. We'll make sure it's allocated or in use. Uh, does a string copy of our choice, it looks like. Freeze it, grabs the, writes this one last string. Would you like to see your data one last time before it's gone? Uh, looks to see if your inputted buffers yes or no. And then if it is yes, it looks like it writes it. And then after that, it looks like it zeroes out the notes index of that item. So as since we're talking about race conditions this week, there's actually a race condition in the delete function and just the application itself. Since it's using threads instead of forks, it's all going to use the same memory space and uh, libc, the heap will kind of be different, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But in this case, if we get to the delete in one thread connected to the system, we can pause right here so it's already freed, and then we're able to edit it before it's actually zeroed out. So we have a use after free in this case. And we could use that along with just the ability to have the an index in multiple locations possibly to have, or just use after free to get something going. And just to prove that this works, we can just get a sample case going. Um, I'm going to use template. I'll move exploit to just E2 again. Move template to exploit.py. Is there so any way the font size could be enhanced? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. So this is a little bit different than the usual setup. This time I'm using a class, and the reason I'm doing this is because if we just did the regular send create edit with p.send or yeah p.send line after, 
it won't really work if we're trying to make multiple connections. In this case, we can now do Q is equal to connection, and both of those will be two separate connections and able to use all these functions. Um, argumentably, a class is probably the best way to go for all of these, but it's not really as fast. But anyways, so if we make a p dot connection and then p dot create, let's say size of 256. We'll p dot edit that. So index zero data will say hello, and then we'll do q is equal to connection just to see if we're actually using the same space. We can do p dot delete of zero, which will then allow us to print out or ask us if we want to print it. Which in this case, our delete is always going to do yes. Um, I didn't really go over the functions, but create just does the create. Edit last for the index, data, delete, just automatically sends yes, so we can always get that printout. Uh, delete stall will stall instead of printing the yes, and then just yes will send the yes, so probably use these two together when we get to that stall. And we should probably actually fix this to send two, and this to send two also. Switch this up to just send after, so we have a no new line in some cases. So in this case, if we went q.p.interactive and just ran the binary, Python exploit, um, it should have printed it, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I did p.delete, q.delete. So inside the Q aspect, we're able to see that the hello was there, so it had access to the notes array of that P also has access to. So as with anything, we kind of need to get a leak, and then since this is malleking and freeing, we need to get it inside the heap. Uh, go to foam, go to delete and create. We can see that we're using free and malloc. So we're all working with the heap stuff, and this is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to do GDB binary, just so we can see it. And I'm also going to do set detach on fork to off. So what this does is when it forks it off or creates a new thread. Actually, I don't know if it actually does this by default. But pretty sure, even though it says on fork, even when it creates a new thread, it'll GDB will keep the ability to swap between threads so you don't have to uh, connect to a different thread or something whereas if this is set to on I'm fairly confident that you have to like start up a new GDB or attach the new process or whatever but this way we're just able to jump through them and with this let's just start off with creating 512 create two of them and then edit the first one with all A's to see where it's at and we don't really care about Q at the moment, so we'll call this P. And we just run. Edit is not defined. Oops. To run it again, because every time we connect and then it crash, or we disconnect, it's probably going to crash because of shoddy programming. But if we were to do heap bins, you'll see that there's nothing in here. And even if we continued and deleted note 1, nope. We should have an index of 0x200 in the tcache, but there's nothing here. And the reason for that is that we're actually going to have a thread isolated heap at this location. And each time a, an application is threaded, so now this heap or this chunk right here is this thread's own arena. And if we actually continue down, we can see its own tcache, which is going to be right here. And here's the address to the chunk we just freed. As we can see, and then if you went back, another 200 should be our first A's. Yep. Now, in Jeff, there is a way to set this. If you grab the address of the arena, you should be able to do heap set arena and then do heap bins. But for some reason, the tcache and the fast bin don't always. I've had mixed results with them actually working. But for the most part, you can see that our sort of bins, our small bins, and our large bins are pointing at this new arena. So if we had any of those, they should show up. But since we're in this new arena, we can't really 
if we were to do a normal kind of leak method where you allocate a bunch of chunks to fill up tcache and then free them all so you have an unsorted bin inside the heap in the heap the pointer will just point to this heap arena instead of the actual libc but we have this pointer right here inside this second heap or second arena that points to the original arena so we need to find a way to actually leak that based off our heap location now the way we can do that is that overall the first thread heap location is a good chance that it's always going to end at these last pretty much just this last four or five uh, four or five nibbles I guess are going to be zeros we're going to start and it's always going to be at a the same offset to libc because it always grows upward so it's going to allocate this chunk and then this like all these chunks all correspond to our thread I think that right here no, probably this one right here. This might be incorrect also. Let's go minus 0x100. So one of these is actually the stack for the thread also. So we can do thread 2 to switch to it. Just check out the context. XRSP. Uh, looks like it's at 7db4. 7db, so it's actually this chunk. Uh, so I'm not really sure quite what these two are. F they might just be filler buffers to uh, pad out between the libc and previous or next chunks. But it shows for us that it's not readable. But in the context of the second thread, it or it's not readable or writable, but in the context of the thread, it should be readable and writable because this is actually its stack. And then here's its heap. And these are, like I said, they're going to be constant offsets from libc because it grows upward when you end map stuff for the thread in most cases. But anyways, back to the actual exploit. So we need to find a way to leak the address that's right here. And the only way to leak it is to delete nat or to delete something. So we need to be able to have a chunk that points right here, be able to delete it so it prints out our value, and then go from there. But the problem with that is that if we try to delete any chunk, we need to have valid sizes. For the libc we're using is 2.31. And there's enough protections within tcache and unsorted bins itself to be able to check to whether you're actually working on a valid chunk. And right now there's no sizes here. So what we're going to have to do is actually overlap two chunks. Get one chunk to point right here so we can get a valid size. And then maybe overwrite this spot right here with 0x30 or something, 20. So it points right here because this is a valid enough looking chunk. And so is that. So it could be pretty much anywhere. But overall, we just need to kind of get two over two overlapping chunks right here, so we can write one and then free them, free the other. So an easy way to kind of that's not easy, but what we can start with is using our use after free to get up there. So we'll do another pre dot create. We'll go ten. That should create, or we'll go twenty. Go twenty four actually. So that should create a size 0x20, so 32 bytes total. Do another p.create. We'll go, we'll only do 124, but we're going to do two 32s. And so this case, you'll just have to follow along, but then I'll explain my methodology after. So what we're going to do for now is actually keep that, just put it at the bottom. We're going to do a p dot delete of index zero. P dot. We'll do a delete stall of index one. And then this is where we'll have q come in. Q is equal to connection. Also, q dot edit one allows us to edit it before it's actually zeroed out, but it is freed, so the t cache should overwrite it and point to zero. So we're able to overwrite the zeros, or not the zero, but the 512 tcache pointer in the way we want. And what we're going to do is point this to uh, we're going to do d008. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to put it right here where the tcache actually is at. So we're just going to be able to overwrite the tcache itself and just create infinite amount of tcache allocations that we want. We don't have a heap leak per se yet kind of 
but that's not really needed since we can just do partial overwrites, which is what we're going to do with the 24. But we're not able to do that with the 32 because we, in that case, we'd be overwriting the 24. So we're going to just overwrite the 32 or the 32 byte one and then do the same kind of edit we're doing right here. So after this first edit, we could probably do p.yes. So that should put our tcache in the location we want and we can run it to make sure everything looks good. Do a PM map, go here, x slash this, we'll go 80. So at this location, we have a pointer to exactly where we want, D7, nope, not yet. Go to this location, and we see that we have the pointer at 8D0. So if we allocate two chunks, 512, allocate chunk, 512, this second allocation, so what's going to be at index 1, since we goes, finds the first 0 in the notes and then uses it. So we should have the allocation at our tcache right here, which we do. So, with this, we can now, if the tcache had any values in it, we could do a partial overwrite of them, or we could make it look like there's a tcache value there when there actually isn't, if we had the heap address or something. So, from this, let's also do a delete, go p dot delete. It's probably a good or safe bet to just, like, keep all of your processes on one thread in case if something messes up so you kind of can follow along maybe so right, right now I'm doing P to uh, do the edits creates and deletes except for in this case where we're doing the overwrites we'll just keep Q for that and we'll just probably keep up with that throughout the whole thing so to P dot delete three so we go nope two just put a little markers here so it'll be zero one two Four. So we're going to free three and do four also. And just pretty much do the same thing we did up here. Do p dot delete stall on, oops, I want that on four actually. Four. Do a q dot edit on four. And we'll put in, this one's going to make it look like there's a valid uh, chunk in the in the random location that's the heap which it's not there yet I think it was D this one was D or 08D0 I think this one was 0870 I'll have to check up on that just to make sure So then we should be able to do p.yes to finish that out. And we should see now our tcache. Oops, let's continue. Minus 0x100, just to be safe. So this 870, yep. And then inside the tcache, we have this one that will be the 32 bit, or no, I guess it'd be 48 in this case, chunk size. And this points to not the correct value. It looks like I'm backwards. Gotta love that little ending in this. Yeah. 70. 08. Check that out again. And that looks good. So after two more allocations, we can make it look like there's an actual fake chunk there. And in this case, we could just keep going. We can do a p.delete of 2 now. So we get this guy in the tcache. Um, we could just do another 24. So I have two 24s and then do the same method here. But I'm going to use the tcache itself to overwrite it and we'll go from there. Then we do p.create. We want 132 to allocate it. This should go into index 2 now that it's Oh no. Yeah, index two. Actually, I need to create those two first. Yep, let's go p.create512 so we don't forget about them. Index zero, index one. This will point to T 
tcache itself. This one should go to index two then. P dot create another 32. This should be index three, and this points to before leak. Next, if we let me just make sure that all that's all right first. So 870. Um, we'll probably just check out notes actually. So index three points to oh, right here. Index three because it's zero based. 870, which is correct. So if we edit this, we can make it look like a valid chunk. And then we also have this all good so far. Let's continue. Which I just didn't need to continue to start over. So let's edit out index three. We'll go p64 of zero because we don't care about the first value plus p64 of zero x so 35 and the reason I'm going 35 is because if you look whoops um set 35 because usually be 31 but we also have the third bit set which makes it 35 and it's the third bit because it's an arena it's specifying that it's an arena chunk and if we check back all the heap chunks that are allocated normally are also like that so we can see right here 295 that's a heap chunk that's why it's like that uh, 215 they all end with just five so we're just going to continue to make sure nothing seems out of the ordinary I don't think it should break if we do 31 but it's just safe to keep it the same way so we can do p dot edit of one now which is the t cache we can do p64 of 0x1 do this times 16 plus backslash 80 backslash 08. So what this should look like now is that our tcache has this chunk right here and since it's set to 01 which is going to be the first index um, it's going to think that this chunk is actually there. So our next allocation of Anything less than 32, which or fits into the 32 byte chunk, should be taken from that list. Do X notes. And we see we're set at 8080, which is where we want it to be. So if we set this up with 16 characters, we should be able to make it feasible. Uh, index 4. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, and then new line. And if we delete index 4, print it, we should see we have our leak, which is exactly what we wanted. So, let's keep from there. So, p dot create go 24, let's put an in index 4. p dot, we'll also just say it's leak pointer. p dot create, uh, nope, p dot edit. We'll go a times 16. We can do 16 here because we're doing, we're not sending a new line with it with edits, because we're doing send two. But in that case, I had to send a new line because I was working from a terminal or from interactive mode. And then from there, we could do p dot delete four p dot read until. Let's read until. I believe it is what, yep, because there's no new line sent after. So we can get rid of those last four characters. We'll call this leak, and we'll print out leak to see if we got it correctly. Um, oh, it's not p.read until, uh, p.p.read until, so we're working with the class. And by the looks of it, we have it correctly. So, we should just be able to do, I'm going to switch this up and add just tack in there. So let me just do leak is equal to leak dot split on tech. So we're not sure if maybe there might've been garbage bytes from the last menu or something, or an extra space or new line or something. So this is just a way to be safe. 
We'll grab index one, because that's where the leak should actually be. We can do leak is equal to u64 of leak left adjust eight characters by null bytes. And we can print the hex of the leak to see if we got the correct value. Run it. And it looks like we have something that similar to what it should look like. Check out 8080, and it looks like it is correct. Now, the reason I did everything 16 bytes off, so like I put a chunk here and then filled it up with 16 bytes, is because if we put the chunk here and then malloced it, Tcash would have overwritten this value, I'm pretty confident, because it likes to get rid of the values that are in the head of the value. Um, I guess we could have allocated here and then freed it, which not all that wouldn't have worked either. I'm pretty sure this might have been the only way to do that correctly or safely, is by having it off of 16, so when you allocate the chunk it doesn't zero out this libc value as it would if you allocate a chunk from the tcash or just from much any unsorted bin. Actually, I don't think unsorted bins do, but it doesn't matter too much. So I should have grabbed the leak off of that, but we'll grab that later. So now that we have the leak and we're able to overwrite tcash as much as we want, we could just set tcash to point to freehook and then overwrite freehook with system and then just free something that points to bin sh, and boom, we should have a shell. So let's go with that. We can do libc is equal to leak minus, not really sure on the value yet, let's find out. Um, since we're in GDB, this value should always be the same. So we have the libc is off by that much from the arena. Then we can have free hook is equal to libc plus get free hook here, and we might as well get system while we're here. Print. Oops. So free hook is at zero x one c one e seven zero. System is at libc plus one C one E did I just copy the same one? I sure did. There you go, that looks way better. Two three D F zero. So we edit one again, so we can just edit as many times as we want. Do p dot edit. Um, pretty sure we're not stopped anywhere. Okay. Edit one. We'll do the same thing as last time. P six four zero x one times sixteen. The reason we're doing times sixteen is because the first hundred and twenty eight bytes represent the counter for tcash, and we need to make sure our counter error location is one. And after that, then it goes the 32 byte chunks, 48 byte chunks, 64, just continues. So later we'll kind of get a little bit more specific with which one, but for now this is kind of all we need. Do P64 of freehook. So technically, since we're putting 0x1 16 times, it's going to make it look like there's actually tcash chunks later on, and if we allocate a, a size that's not valid, or of one of these that looks like it's valid or in use, but it's all going to be zero. It should error out on us and crash. But we should be able to get this going. So next create we do of size 32 or less should point to free hook. And I think this is going to point to four. Pretty sure. Go free hook. Edit it out. P64 system. And we need to check to see how it looks. Uh, add the P again. So 
So if we check out free hook, add your stuff. Looks like it is there's something here this time. Is it the address of system? It is not. Usually there's nothing here. But this does look like Wait, that's something seems off. I'm not sure what. Print the address of free hook. Oops. So that does look like it's free hook, but that value doesn't seem right, and I think. C leak minus C plus. Because usually it is zero if you don't actually write anything to it. And if we get rid of this, I'm pretty sure we're definitely writing to it. I wonder if I copied the system address wrong. So let's just check that out. Yeah, so that was definitely the address we had. But that's not the address of system. Not even close. So that's interesting. We'll just do the map do uh, maybe I just copied the wrong one. Oops. Yeah, that is not the value we have written down. Fix that for eight df zero, but it's a good indication that we did have this correctly overriding free hook. Check this out. Go x16 gx free hook. That looks better. Just check to make sure. And that is system. Uh, we can't really do anything. Now we could create a note. We'll go size 32. That should be zero. Edit index five. We're gonna put bin sh. Uh, I think the new line might mess it up, but that's not the problem we're gonna have. Actually, I don't think it should. Now if we delete index 5, we should get a show. Oh, GDB doesn't like it when you have uh, the detach fork on and try to clone it or get a shell. But that is a good indication that we did possibly get something. Um, I'm just going to switch this up a little bit, get rid of change up 3. Since we're not using the first 8 bytes, I'm just going to put bin sh here. Now, before I continue through, there's some things to realize, is that we overwrote the free hook that's used by every single thread in this application, so if other connections are also using this, they also have an, a chance to use system, which could be problematic for you or the application if someone else accidentally finds what you're doing, if you're doing this for bug bounty purposes or something, um, but CTF-wise, usually you're running your own application each time you connect so you don't have to worry about it too much but even then maybe you're they have it set up where everyone shares the same application so in a CTF you have to be careful that you're not giving someone else the flag but even in this case you don't really have to worry too much because this won't work correctly and as you can see that it spawns the shell on the system that the actual process was running and not over here so if we do LS absolutely nothing comes through but if we do here it works and the reason that's happening is because all of our connections are done through a socket and this is just going to use standard in and standard out. So we actually need to find a way to bypass this and get it running correctly. Um, at this point, I'm pretty sure GDB is just fried because it ran the connected to the system call. So let's I'll just reload it. Binary will do back to the set. Oops. Attach fork on or off. So freehook doesn't work, and there might be a way to, I don't think there's any one gadgets that'll set the context for you in the way we need it, and the way we need to bypass this is if we remember back to our shell coding, is that we need to do the dupe trick where we can duplicate our socket to standard in, or standard in, standard out, and standard error to our socket, so we have all the connections coming to us. But to do that, we need more operability than just one syst or one call. And I looked, but I wasn't able to find any good ROP gadgets that 
just jump you to your heap gadget. So instead, we're going to have to try and find a way to get our functionality to overwrite the stack itself. But lucky for us, if we remember back, I'm going to change this and this for now. If you remember back, our stack is just located right above libc, and we're able to find that relatively simply every, or not relatively simply, we're able to find that because it's off uh, based off of a fixed number every single time. We just need to know where it's at. So I'm going to use Q for this one, just because we haven't used Q since we did the other thing. But if we check out the context and look at RSP, RSP is at 75B3, which is at 75B3. It's going to be in this location. No. Yes. Is it? Wait. 75B3. I don't think it should be within that read write bowl. But it looks like it is. Oh well. Anyways, we just do check out our stack. We can see that we have our current return to vuln and then return to start thread, which there's a good chance that start thread called vuln, so this is the value we want to overwrite. So we just take this address. Uh, can't take it just yet, so we need to take the libc one first since it's higher. Do libc minus the address we want to overwrite, and it looks like it's at an offset of 8051.08. And there's a good chance that if you're the second thread on the application, you're always going to be at this location. If you're not at the second thread, it's going to be a bit harder to find. There should be some libc pointer somewhere that point to it. But I'm pretty sure it goes, I'm pretty sure that both threads should be in this location, but, so maybe it won't be too hard to find it either way. Uh, no guarantees on that though. So we'll just put this down. We'll call it stack is equal to libc minus this address. Then we can edit. Uh, we're gonna go for a little bit bigger of one. So we're gonna go zero, one, so it's two, three, four, and we're going to fill it this time. So this chant this way, because I believe that the tcache point or values are shorts. So we need to fill out two bytes for every single one we fill out. And we're just going to put them all to one. And then we're also going to do stack here and then do times 30 should be enough. So then if we do a, oops dot create we'll go 300 it should take it from the or it should put us at the stack location do p dot create not p dot create pre -edit, edit five nope four this one's now the four that we're working with uh we'll just do 300 days so this shouldn't crash anything it should pretty much just look correct but if we check out the stack which i should have printed do this. I guess I could have just gone to RSP, but I think it was minus 0x2000. Uh, it should be down here. D, yep, there we go. We can see our A's are correctly on the stack. If we come here, oops, stack. Oh, uh, and then stack isn't an actual Jeff command. I just, uh, I alias telescope to it, so you just do telescope that address also. This way, I just do stack, and then it'll print out art based off RSP because I set it up that way. But anyways, we can see that our return to volume is there, but we overwrote the return after. So if we continue, oh, missed it by that much. We need to interact with the Q thread this time. Q dot P dot interactive. So if we interact with the Q thread, Python, and just exit, we can see that we correctly crash it and that we have the stack control right here. So we just need to set up a wrap gadget to get us what we need. So to do that, I've got a bunch of gadgets. Ooh, that's some small text right here. Just all the gadgets. Uh, we're going to need RDI. Pop. 
it's set up this way. So just give me garbage ones, rep. Just grab a random one. Can set these all up. Let's make some space. We don't care about the system at the moment. And keep that. So RGI is equal to libc plus that. We're going to need RSI probably. libc plus RSI. Instead of me just going gadget by gadget, I'm just going to copy over the list I have from the previous exploit. Get rid of this one. And I'll just walk through what they're used and how they work. So here we have pop RDX, pop RAX. Uh, sub RAX does RAX is equal to, or just subs RAX RDI. So we can set RDI to a value in sub RAX, which we'll need. Uh, exchange does exchanges EDI and EAX, I believe. Yes, and we'll need that for the dupe also. So if you remember back, the best way to figure out, because we don't actually know what our, we could probably guess, and since we're kind of doing a lot of guessing with the second thread stack already, we could probably guess the file hand or the socket file handle that's used for this, but we're going to assume we don't actually know what the socket connection is. So if you run dupe, like on say standard input, it should return the next available socket. So in this case, it would probably return seven, even though I thought it'd be six. But so this will be put into RAX. Then if we do dupe. Uh, the value that's return, returned from that one, so we'll just sell RAX with zero, oops, one, two, and three, or one, two. This should duplicate our sock, our uh, zero, one, and two to our socket connection, allowing us to get all the connections from stand input, output, and error. And then if we did bin sh system, then we should have bin sh system, we should have our correct call to our, our correct connection back with the shell that we want. I'm also going to grab this one where bin sh is at that address. So with this, we can set up our chain. So get RDI to be zero first for, to get the first dupe. Dupe, this is returned to RAX. So when you get this RDX value back to RDI, first we're going to sub it though. Usually you sub one because that should be the most recent uh, file descriptor that's used. So put RDI to one, we'll do a sub RAX, so it subs it. Then we do exchange, so it moves that value into RDI. Do RSI zero, dupe two, RSI one, dupe two, RSI two, dupe two. Uh, and then we should be able to keep RDI the same because it shouldn't change. Let me grab these two addresses so I don't have to uh, look them up. And then dupe and dupe2 are just system or function calls, which all that they do is do inv invoke the system call, but it's enough for what we need. So from dupe2, then we should just be able to do RDI, bin SH, and then system. I think that should be good. Um, we can edit this instead of having this. We'll do P64 of chain. Oops, not P64, just do chain. And then fix chain first. Chain is equal to the join of the map P64 of chain. I'm just going to delete these two because they're useless to us for now or just in general now. I think that should get us to where we want for the moment. Exit that, run it, Python exploit. So we haven't exited yet, so let's connect to thread three. We'll finish our current function. We'll send in the four, so we hit that, finish. Inside bone, we can go to the ret to see if our chain is working. Ooh, it looks like we're off a little bit. Uh, no worries, we can just set up some uh, how much am I off by, though? We went over in the dupe, which we only call dupe once. So we should be able to find from there. 
see the dupe right here. So we're only off by 16. So we can just change that stack. Let's go to plus 16. Didn't actually want to close it, but oh well. Thread three, finish. Uh, exit, finish again. Don't need anything for that side. Go through to the ret. Whoops. Oh, that time we didn't overwrite it. Interesting. So why did it... Huh. It's weird that it didn't hit that time. Let's try eight. Thread three. Finish. Finish. Step through the foam. I just want to keep going too fast. Okay, so at the ret, we still aren't there. Looks like we're off by one. So we were right the first time. Maybe I just stepped through it too quick the first time. We actually had it right, which would have been my bad. Thread three, finish. Hit up four. Can I just finish again? Oh, I can. Okay, so I must have just stepped through it too quick the first time. So pop RDI, ret, hit the syscall for dupe. Dupe will return seven. But if we, so that's a good assumption to make that six is our current, our thread ID for Q. But if we check out, let's go RSP plus 100. Um, where the heck, oh, not plus, minus. Uh, if we actually look through the way the program works, we can see that the file descriptor is getting passed to every single function, so it should be on the stack already. And if we look, it looks to be five. Oh, right here, five. Could be a coincidence, that five, but, because then all of our stuff's down here, but the file descriptor is actually five. Um, we could set up a elaborate chain to try and pop this guy off and then rotate it over, since it's not an even boundary. But instead, we can just do a sub 2 instead of a sub 1. So we can just work with 5 instead of 6. Probably not the best way if you're wanting this to be consistent. But it works for what we need. Uh, thread 3, actually. Finish. Next instruction. Let me just finish again, actually. Hit pop RDI. Hit the dupe, see that it's seven, because it's always going to be seven if we always stay this consistent running and then restart. Pop RDI will be two, sub it, so REX is now five. Exchange them. Uh, inside, pop RSI, ret. Ooh, looks like dupe two did not work, or did not get put in. Interesting. So we definitely have to pop RSI. Wonder if... Oh, yep, I missed a zero. It was subtraction the wrong amount. Uh, let's go back to thread three again. Uh, finish. Uh, yeah. Finish, finish. Pop RDI, dupe. Uh, pop RDI sub swap pop RSI so that should be zero check RSI is zero yep go to dupe two pop RSI dupe two pop RSI dupe two then we should pop RDI should be business H and then we should go to system I wonder if this will work set detach fork on continue oh it did work and we can see we have a show and it's not just on the local system, it's actually for us. Um, if you wanted, you could have probably also just ran or set up a different system command instead of just bin sh. So maybe you want to just do a netcat reverse shell, you could have done that. But this way you have just interactive shell through the exploit itself. And then one last thing I was going to come back to is that the inside the delete function, 
and the edit function is that this check right here, after it does a die on your choice, a die is unsigned by default. No, signed by default. So there's a chance you could have walked backwards from the notes. So if we check out, I have to run it again. Binary. Run it. Just check out the address of notes. Minus 0x100. Oops. Won't like that. Um, gosh. X. There we go. Minus 0x100. So you can see how the got is right above it. We could have probably pointed to any of these. So one last uh, data into any of these strings to possibly have gotten a leak that way of the binary itself. And then from there, you could have overwrote the notes or just one of the got values because I don't think full rel row is on. Nope, it's only partial. So you definitely could have overwrote the got. But the way we went, we didn't have a binary leak, so we didn't have a way to do that. But yeah, just some different things to look out for. Uh, any questions regarding the challenge or the binary? I have a question. So when it was like 7 for RAX with your duplicated socket, yep. if it was on a real system, wouldn't that be like not predictable? So the way we're able to predict it is... Well, not really, because my theory for the reason it's 7 is based on how the main, or not 6, because usually it should be 6, because 5 was used for our connection, and then it should be 6, but I think the way that it's listening and accepting is that this accept is gobbling up that 6 before anything actually connects to it, and causing 6 to be used, but in reality... If your exploit is quick enough, you're always going to be one or two higher than the file descriptor you just used. So if we ran this instantly, so if we just ran a binary, uh, Python exploit, it should always work because our dupe will always give you the next file descriptor and our connection just created the previous file descriptors right away. So unless the system is getting hounded by connections constantly i guess there's a good yeah, chance what if that you like, what if you can't restart it at will if it's like a real so yeah, binary if you can't system. restart at will you're gonna have to be more careful with the heap but <laughs> our file descriptor should still be similar to because dupe will always give you the similar offset should always give the similar offset to our current thing unless it like i said it's getting hounded but in that case then you could just pull it off the stack with some more rock gadgets so you always have okay. a way to grab the, but usually dupe one, just the first dupe call is safe enough to be able to be able to use constantly or in the reference you need it. Um, All right, yeah. I thought of something, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, what I was going to say is when I was creating this exploit first, I was fairly confident that after running binary that since it's on an ASLR system, GDB usually disables some of the ASLR-ness of it. But given that we'll attach, we can do set detach and fork off. We'll just continue now. But we're actually turns out that these threaded addresses are always going to end or fairly regularly start at this address itself. So you're always going to have a good guess of where your heap is, which allows you to get a good feel for being able to overwrite it. Because otherwise you'd have to do a one nibble brute force because we're trying to get the beginning of the ad or zero address, I guess. But there's not always a guarantee that this is going to be at a zero. So we're kind of brute forcing it, but during my testing I found that this is always the address it's at. And then... I'm not really quite sure how we'd find the stack correctly, but there's got to be a way. Unless you want to overwrite the actual stack of the main binary, but I don't think that ever returns. Unless you can race it even further and try and grab it between a pthread call. 
but yeah thanks for Whack. thanks for watching